welcome back to my channel. I'm going to finish up getting the deck done today here behind me and once that's done then I can start actually building the the head unit for the mill and get that going and hopefully I can get that done this week. So I'll uh, show you bits and pieces of my progress on that. Hopefully this will be the last video on the mill.
So I use a Timberland sharpener for my steel chainsaw chains. It works pretty good. It's pretty consistent. Um, once in a while when I'm cutting, I'll hit a nail or something in a tree where somebody had posted a sign at one time on this property probably because I'll see sparks coming in. It'll nick these things and which I did last time. I hit something and I saw some sparks so I'm actually doing more turns than what they recommend doing but I'm just making sure I get the edges nice and clean. But I really like the sharpener. It works great. I mean very consistent compared to the old school one. Well, I guess there's a couple different versions. There's the uh, old school file version here that mounts on there. So that's a good backup one I use. And then if I'm around just my truck or whatever and I'm out cutting, this is along the lines of that old school one except for it's electric 12 volt and goes like that. And that's a carbide bit on that too. So that's very adjustable in all directions for mini saws. Works really nice. So. I don't know if you can see that the light isn't very good here but um, I prefer the Timberland sharpener because it's a fixed sharpener it's got fixed angles and you can buy them for different angles depending on what kind of chain you have and uh, I buy I bought two extra carbide bits. I've already went through one because I do a lot of a lot of cutting pretty much on a daily basis around here. So I want to keep them good and sharp. As soon as they start smoking, you know it's time. <laughs> or if they if the cutting slows down, it seems like they're not cutting like they were before, then you know you're that's one way turn over your bar each time you cut um, I didn't do that with one of my bars I've got a couple bars I got a 30 inch bar for this one and this right now is a 28 inch the 30 inch is an Oregon bar steel doesn't make one but uh, yeah I didn't turn it over much so I had to file it down even and so I'm turning this one over every time I sharpen it now and that should help I mean I may have to file it again someday make it last as long as you can anyway it takes a bit of time on a bar this long and you know, a lot of people are using the 20 inch saw I think I got a 20 inch saw as well that's the one I'm going to use on uh, the beams when I cut the notches in the ends I'm going to use my 20 inch steel for that. This one I use for cutting down the trees. I've cut down some trees that the bar maybe had five inches left on the end. So probably 24 inches across. Pretty good sized trees. And I've got one of those delimbed down here at the bottom of my property and ready to cut and bring up. But I thought I would just, I delimbed it and just thought I'd let it sit there and uh, hopefully dry a little bit because I need to cut down a bunch of trees. So I think I'm just going to go around and in future videos, I'll just be cutting down a bunch of trees kind of systematically, get them laid, get them delimbed and have them ready for me to start moving one at a time up to the mill because they're going to still be green when I'm building and when I'm cutting them which is you know it's okay it's not optimum optimum would be to have a couple of years letting them sit somewhere in the shade but dry so they could cure 
and less likely to crack because they're not going to, if they're out in the sun, they're going to probably crack because they're going to dry too fast. But a good slow dry would be optimum. But uh, I'm going to put it up green on this cabin. And in the, this winter, I'm going to cut down stuff for the next cabin, which will still basically be green because by the time I start building the next cabin, uh, which will butt up to this first cabin, um, I think that uh, the wood will still be green and it'll still shrink and possibly get cracks in it. But I think it'll give it character. I'm not too concerned about it. So I think I've been on this probably a good half hour and this is just one side. I still got to go through this side and readjust for the other angle. So that's the nice thing about the sharpener is it works both angles. You don't have to take it off here once you get it set. You just have to adjust the, the force against the tooth and make sure it's not too much force, obviously. But you want a, a little bit of force so that you can take off a little bit of the metal and get it sharp. Let's see here. that the one I did yep all right I'm on the other angle now but I think that's good enough for now That's the last bolt. They're all just threaded on enough to, to hold everything in place. I'm not torquing them down until I get everything square. But that's it. Both sides are done. Uh, have plenty of nuts and bolts left, I'm sure, for other parts of the project. But tomorrow, we'll get everything leveled out after I go to the store and pick up a torque wrench. And I'll get everything torqued on down and we'll move on to the carriage. Uh, 
motor carriage, I think they call it. Anyways, we'll get on to the next phase of the build.